You're listening to Garibaldi Red, a Nottingham Forest podcast brought to you by Nottinghamshire Live. Thanks for all the questions. We've got loads and loads to get through. Will Brennan Johnson ever be a top in full block letters? Top Premier League player? Well, I, w- I wonder what the definition of a top Premier League player is. It's not that long ago, if you kind of rewind it back, that Brennan was on loan at Lincoln. And last season, a lot of things happened for him that went really well. He scored goals, played in a, a very confident team in the second half of the season. The team, as, as Prutz said earlier, was very good at counter-attacking, which suits the way that he plays. Brennan is still in the learning stage of his career. I think to step up to the Premier League at the stage that he's at, you've got to give him a season's grace to work it all out. I've got no doubt with the physical skills that he's got and the mentality that he's got that he can more than hold his own in the Premier League. And I also think as well that when you look at the team in general, he's probably the best finisher in the club, despite the fact they've not been going in as frequently as they were last season, this season. So I've got no doubt that he'll develop into a a very good Premier League player. Whether he gets to the absolute top, You'd say the same about anybody. That, that's, a diff- that's rarefied air. That, that's, that's the elite in world football if you become a top Premier League player. But I think when I look at him, it's all happened very quickly for him. Very talented, great attitude. I think this season is a feeling out season for him. I think he'll get better from this point on. The second half will start. He's learned a lot. I've got no concerns whatsoever about Brennan Johnson as a, as a Premier League footballer. I just think the expectation levels have been a little bit high for him from the opening game. I think people maybe came in and thought he's going to score 15 or 20 goals. There's not many in the Premier League that do that. So I think it's just a case of giving him a bit of time to find his feet and then watch him go. Not many that bounce up excuse me, from the Championship, obviously via Lincoln, to come into the Premier League and, and get to exactly what you're talking about, Fletch. Um, a lot of things in the tick box, good attitude, very well kind of balanced young man, very likable young man, great energy, good fitness levels. Technically, and you mentioned about the finishing, I remember doing a game against Blackpool last year, two exquisite finishes and how amazing he looked. But in the Premier League, you don't get those chances chucked your way too often, do you? So it's like a lot of Forest players <clears throat> in this uh, current incarnation, a learning curve, but it's it's funny about like a top Premier League player. It's because um, if there's top, obviously, if you're Paul Merson, there's top, top, top players and top, 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 top player, uh, and bless him for for all the tops that he chucks out. But um, it, it's I know what you mean. It, it, you look at these, and, and when you do have the privilege of seeing them, as we, we'd have all done now this season, when they come to the City Ground, there's there's two-thirds of that division that are just fighting for survival. There's a small portion, and then there's the really good teams at the top. And when you talk about top Premier League players, like you say, it's, it's sometimes rarefied, operating yeah. from a different planet. They're the know. best in world football. And I think as well, if, 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 if we were able to judge him at 25, which is going to be moving into his prime years, then I think you'll have a, a very, very good Premier League player. Good striker. Hope he's still here then. Hope Forrest is still in the Premier League then. And if that's the case then you know, we're going to reap the rewards. But I think he's very young still. You've got to remember that. It's very, very early in the piece for Brennan Johnson. He's got a, a, a good family around him too. His dad's got experience. Who was his dad? Well, you know, you'll know all about that. Shy, shy yeah. fella. Used shy fella. Yeah. Very retired. Shy and retiring, yeah. Quiet lad. But I think judge him at 25. It's a little bit early to judge him now, but I think he's got, he's got a lot, really, I think, when you look at him. Do either of you lads think he'll fall short, Greg or Mikey? The start of last season was can he step up from Lincoln to Forest, uh, from League One to the Championship, and he did that so well. I know the Premier League's a 1,000 miles an hour, and you know the, the quality is so much better, but you've got to give him more than five or six months to, to have a definite answer on that question, and I think he's already shown snippets. He's not scoring the goals, but he's not getting the chances. When we improve behind him, he is going to get better and better, and I, I truly believe... Maybe, you know, he might not be one of the best players in the Premier League, but he'll be one of the best players for Forrest in the Premier League. I suppose, Mikey, does he need to be a bit more to elevate himself than a moments player, which is brilliant. But if he can find that bit of consistency to be a 90-minute player a couple of games, that that elevates him, I guess, does it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, You've got to remember, he's still... I mean, does anybody remember Mo Salah playing for Chelsea? And I'm not comparing Brendan Johnson to Mo Salah, but all I'm saying is the point that, that Fletch made and, uh, and David made is players will progress, players will get better. Absolutely. 
I actually think Brennan Johnson is our highest ceiling in terms of player, in terms of valuable asset, the fact that he's just signed a new contract. He is only going to get better. He is not going to get worse. So it's small moments for me. And if any of you watched the friendly against Olympiakos the other week, he did this one turn where he, on the halfway line, he, he, he sort of turned a play, and I'm thinking, that is absolutely fantastic. And it's little things like that, I think, that if he can sort of get that into his game for the second half of the season, he could be that one small difference in one, two, maybe three games that gets us those extra points that keeps us up. So I think Brennan Johnson is, because it's actually my dad that asked the question, so I'm going to answer it. <laughs> so you know what I'm going to say. I think he's fantastic, Brennan Johnson. He's only going to get better. His performances for Wales in the World Cup, He's the next level, right? Because Gareth Bale is not going to play for Wales next tournament, right? Who's going to take his place? Even Nico Williams as well. So we've got some great young players at Forest, and we just all need to get behind them. So I'm really, I'm really positive for Brendan. I'm so glad he signed that new contract because I, I, I genuinely think certainly if we stay up, he could be the man. And even if we go down, is he worth 80 million? Was that the question, Matt, that was asked? I'm not sure. Um, but then you look at players that have gone from the championship in recent seasons. I think a centre back from Bristol City went for 20 million the other season. So yeah, he, he, he probably is. And like I said, you know, his ceiling is really, really high. I think he's great. Right, that's all we've got time for. Thanks, Mikey. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> uh, another question on a similar theme around players stepping up. Um, do you think Sam Surridge needs a run of games? I guess a lot of people here probably think he does. Strikers need that, I think. I've never met one that doesn't moan when he's not playing. And um, But he does look like a very good teammate, doesn't he? There's a sense of biding your time and, and um, being able to nail down that that starting berth. It goes back to what Fletcher was saying with regards to the formation as well, whether it's one that creates or that Steve creates that allows Sam to flourish in that role up top or whether it's still that kind of three with the interchanging of, of the way that they go forward. So... Um, and, and afforded the benefit of goals, really, in positions yeah. when you talk about rivals for his position that are getting... He's probably sat there watching the game sometimes thinking, Christ, can I get something that's very, very similar to that? But it's not been afforded as yet. But I think, yeah, all it is is game time for strikers. I've been fortunate this season to sit next to Gary Bertels for quite a few games, and Gary is Sam's biggest fan. Now, if anybody, yes. if anybody should know a number nine and the way a number nine should operate, it'd be Gary. So I, I would kind of bow to him and listen to what he says and he's adamant that he deserves a run in the team and if you think about the skill set that Gary had it's very similar to the skill set that, that Sam has when you, if, if you kind of watch the two of them play there's a lot of similarities between the pair of them and Gary's adamant that A the team is better with a good number nine and he's also adamant that, that Sam's the player that deserves a run in the team so I would bow to his knowledge of that position and say well if that's good enough for Gaz it's certainly good enough for me I think Greg would pick about 14 players in the Forest team if he could. <laughs> but is, would Surridge be one of them? Well, yeah, I'm not going to be negative about any of them. But what I would say about Sam Surridge is I truly believe he's the most clinical finisher in our club. Like, when he gets a shot on target, if he gets one a game or two a game, it's going to be good. And he, he showed it so many times. Like, he was out of favour at Stoke. Another player that, like, Steve Cooper saw, and Dane Murphy, to his credit, I remember speaking to him, when they signed him about how he's like such a good striker and everything about him, his attributes, uh, he, he spoke like it was like an NFL draft guy. Um, and you see it. So whether, whether he does get the chance for the rest of this season, who knows? But if we've got a one-on-one -on -one and he's going in, he's the guy I want there because he, he is such a clinical finisher. Mikey, before you come in, I'd say we've had two really good performances by number nines this season. One would be our knee against Liverpool at home and the other one would be Sam against Tottenham at home. I think they're the two best performances by a nine in any game this season and by process of elimination, by any striker of any description, you'd, you'd kind of put those two, in my, my, my opinion, would be those two. I'd stick them in a box and say, well, you know, that's what they need. Yeah, I totally agree. Sam Surridge has never let us down. I think everybody can agree with that. Every time he comes on, works hard, he's very clinical, as Greg was saying. Every time he gets given that opportunity to start, runs really hard. You know, he is a, a young player given this opportunity. And I'm going to be really honest, you know, when we signed him, I wasn't that too enamoured. I don't know what you guys thought. I had to Google, if I'm honest. Um, 
and you're thinking, well, okay, so Cooper knows him. Yeah, and, uh, and, 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 and to be honest, he's, he's done really, really well. So I have no uh, qualms with, with Surridge at all. I, I genuinely think as well, you know, you can spend 17, 18 million pounds on a player like we did at Taiwo. And I think Fletch, you said something around he doesn't necessarily know how he's scoring his goals. <laughs> maybe. Um, when is it time to give Sam maybe a chance? It, it, it is all I would say, because like I said to you before, every time he comes on, he never lets us down. Runs hard, dead clinical. I really hope that Sam is still here at the start of February and we've not loaned him out and I'm getting a few nods from the crowd because I genuinely think he could play a big part in this season. Genuinely do you know what do. though, Mikey, when you think about it, if you're going to be a number nine, you've got to be brave. Brave. In many ways, you've got to stick your head in where it hurts. You've got to play with your back to the centre half. He does all that. You've got to make runs all the time. You've got to be able to receive it. And, and, and he'll he do all that. All of that. So he's kind of ticking all the boxes when you look at it. Question for Fletch, I think, this one initially. You were critical of Freuler and Dennis, but this one's about Freuler. After watching the World Cup, would you do anything different with Remo Freuler positional-wise? I think when you look at Freuler play for Switzerland, it's a different scenario than when he plays for Forest. I think that, that when I, when I criticised his performance, it was too many passes square and back. And I think if you're going to play that number six in that team, you've got to pass it forward. I think they've got runners, they've got Brennan Johnson, they've got Jesse Lingard, they've got Morgan Gibbs-White, they've got Tybo Awani. Why the hell are you passing it square and back? You've got to pass it forward more often than not. And I think if they had a, a six at the back of the midfield who could pass it forward and see the, see the opportunities, I think they'd be a better team. So I've not changed my view on him based on what I've seen at the World Cup because he's in a different team. His role's probably different playing for Switzerland than it is for Forest. I think in terms of Emmanuel Dennis, I just don't see it. I was, I was told before he came that he was a bad teammate at Watford. Um, I don't know whether that's the case here. I look at him and I think he's the kind of player that every 10 or 15 minutes you think, I better take him off. And then something sticks in your mind. He'll do a little turn. You think, oh, I might get a goal in a minute. So you give him another 15 minutes. And by the time you get to 80 minutes, you think he's still on there. He's done nothing. So I, I think he's the most frustrating player in the group. I've got no doubt whatsoever that if it ever sinks in what his role is, he can be a good footballer and an asset, but I just don't think at the moment he, he really gets it. So I think if they're going to make changes in, in January, they're going to bring new players in and one or two players are going to go. I mean, I think he'd be on my list to go because I just don't see consistency in what he does. I didn't see it at Watford. It's a strange one with that, wasn't it? Because it was between the three of them, Ishmael Assar, Joao Pedro and Dennis. He, was he started the best. Exactly. And when you're looking at who Watford possibly were um, worried about losing, it was probably in that order, wasn't it? So when Dennis then moved on to, to Fire, because we were, I think we were covering a Watford game as he was about to come down here, or up here. Was it Watford down south? Up here. Up, up here. Yeah. So this is still south to me because I'm from north. It's a funny thing. Um so it was one of those, and like, like I'm like you, Fletch, he's a very, very good player, very, very good championship player, but part of kind of like a Watford side that flirts in between or has flirted in between the two divisions and not really kind of shone in either respect. And when you're talking about him as a teammate and what we've spoken about so far, about what's needed from the point of view of come away from the technical stuff, the fortitude and the character that's needed, does he strike you as one that possibly isn't what they're after? I don't think so. I mean, I watched him play for Bruges in the Champions League against Real Madrid and he absolutely ripped them apart. So the talent's there. And if you've got that kind of talent, I then wonder why you can't do it game after game after game after game because it's in him. Something stops it. Just to go back on the Freuler thing, I think when you're a Premier League midfield, whether you play with, with two in the centre or three in the centre, one of them has to be a passer. One of them has to have vision. One of them has to be creative. Look at the Forest midfield at the minute. Ryan Yates, Czech Kiate, Remo Freuler. Freuler then has to be the one that becomes the passer, the creator. If he's not going to do that, then you've got to put somebody else in that is because you're never going to change Czech and you're not going to change Ryan. So if you're going to play with those two, the third one has to be different. If the two are in there to win the ball and give energy and the third one wants to pass it square and back. Your midfield's not going to take you where you want to go. He played midfield, he'll tell you, more, better than I will. So I just look at the balance in the middle of the pitch and I think it's nice and safe. 
it's okay with a lead. I think if, you, if you're playing with those three and you're one up, you're fine because you're going to be solid. You're not going to get the ball away. Great. But I think if they want to win matches, they've got to be a bit more progressive in there. So for Freuler would be the one for me where I'd say if you can find one that's got a bit more about them with the ball, then it just makes them better as a midfield. It, it's not necessarily a reflection on him. I watched him play for Atalanta at Liverpool in the Champions League. He's the best player on the pitch. So he's a very good footballer. But it's just what they need in that middle third of the field to make the combination work. That, that would be the reason why I'd look at him. Would you sign Lingard for another year? I... Oh, crikey. <laughs> Come on, Mikey. <laughs> His future Your depends on me. Steve Cooper's <laughs> watching. Crikey. Um, I don't want to sit on the fence. Obviously, obviously, it depends on what league we're in, of course. I mean, that goes without saying, right? If we're in the Championship, he ain't going to stay anyway. So it's an irrelevant, it's a relevant question. If we're in the Premier League, I'd probably say, yeah, because I think you guys were talking about it earlier on around... Um, you know, we, we're just now seeing what he's all about. He's been at Man United. I don't know whether you guys have watched the Jesse Lingard documentary, right? He's been at Man United since he was a kid. So, you know, he, he spent a bit of time at West Ham. But to come here, <clears throat> it's going to take anybody a bit of time to, to, uh, to understand what we're all about and to, and to get in. And what I see from him is a player that's getting better, that his teammates like. You saw the way when he scored that goal against Tottenham, you saw the smiling, you know, everybody really, really likes him. You can tell that. That's, that's absolutely obvious. Um, and I would, actually. I think, I think he's, he's not, you know, what is he now, 30? Is he 30? 30 today. So, 30 today, happy birthday. Um, and I would. So, if we stay up, then I think questions have to be asked around the package that he was bought in on, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, so we may want to have a chat about that. But in terms of his playing ability and what he gives to the team and the fact that he's, uh, he's starting most games now, and I think he, he'll probably start against Man United, his old team, and I think he'll probably play against Chelsea as well. Um, I will very much be looking to keep him, certainly if we stay up. I mean, Greg, you picked him out as a player that you think has got to do really well. I'm not sure Forrest actually stay up without Lingard and... Uh, Gibbs White uh, for performing the second half of the season. Is that fair? I love Lingard. I was desperate for him to show that performance. And like I said in the other podcast, he, he's shown that performance now. And I know it's like easy for a fancy, but you've watched that little documentary and you've seen his character. No matter what the, the tabloids say, he's a good person. He's a good person on the training pitch. He could teach these young players, you know, these young impressionable players so much um, my only thing is, if we stay up and we've got Scarpa, Lingard, Morgan Gibbs-White and we'll sign more players, like I can't imagine every single one of them stays and, and continues to be that kind of player. So I'd love him to be the man. And he's still in his prime and he's got two, three years where he could be the guy for us. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a massive Lingard fan and I, I hope he does do it. And if we stay up, it would be because of people like him and Morgan Gibbs-White's form. Do you see Steve Cooper becoming an international manager with Wales or England in the future? Perhaps, I mean, I, I hope Southgate stays for another 10 years, but I wouldn't want Cooper to be in for that job. Well, I mean, I don't think an England team should have a non-English manager, so I open and go. Yeah, I mean, a, co a good coach is a good coach is a good coach. He, he could, he's, he's already won. I've just said that, and I obviously won the World Cup, didn't he? Oh! But that was with the junior team, so that doesn't count. Um, but... To, I, I, th I mean, he's a very, very, very proud Welshman. So to see him take over the national team there would be, if you're from a Wales point of view, would be w would be wonderful, given the journey that they've been on. But um, I, th I think from speaking to him and seeing how he's loved the day to day, and it sounds like we're all part of the Steve Cooper fan club, which I think we all are, aren't we? But um, I think the, the job that he's doing here and the time that he's been afforded hopefully carries on. Um, he would be a good coach of most clubs and, and kind of nationalities that he would be afforded the opportunity for. Like I said, I've got a particular thought process about the England team manager. Um, but, if he, I, but I presume, given his background and given his, his, his heritage, if he got the chance to manage Wales, it'd be something that he would give some serious thought to. I think it's down to ownership here. I don't think he's got any desire to go and manage anywhere else. I think if, if ownership invests in him, and the club continue to move forward. I think it's a moot point. I don't think it's it's on the table. 
I think if he ends up leaving here and going somewhere else and he doesn't make the connection with that club that he's made here, then I think anything's on the table for him. But I think that's down to Evangelos Marinakis and the way that he sees his club developing. If he sees that through Steve Cooper, I don't think Steve's got any desire to go and be any one else's manager. I think he wants to stay here. So I think it, it's in the hands of ownership in Nottingham which will dictate what his future looks like. Does anyone know why there hasn't been any away displays this season? Is that for Garibaldi or is that Forrest being getting points on the road? Last season was so intense. Like the last seven or eight games, it was display after display after display. And we hoped it helped. Um, the, the amount of time that, <laughs> that it took for us to put in, like we're all volunteers, uh, was just, it was, it was intense. So we did something for West Ham. There was, a, there was an issue. So there was an issue with the West Ham display that we, we got a little bit mardy about. Um, however, we've all promised ourselves that it, the start of it feels like the new season now, doesn't it? We've had that incredible bit of funding from our glorious banners and their book. Um, and it is like what Simon's done, who, who did that book, is just unbelievable. The amount of money he's raised for us and the Robin Hood charity, it's put us in the position now where if someone asks that question, we can't say, we haven't got to do, we've got to do the displays now. We've got plans in place. We've got people like <laughs> doing things that we're so lucky to have. You know, teams like Leicester with the little plastic things, and it, that's embarrassing, <laughs> isn't it? We know that's not going to happen with us. So if we're going to do stuff, we want to make sure that it's impressive, we do it right, it's got thought behind it. And, and that's what we're doing now. We can't just say, it's Chelsea next week. We, we've got to put a display together. It takes weeks. It takes months sometimes. But I promise you that it is happening. And right, so get your finger out. That's the, get your finger out. Get it sorted. <laughs> Go on and do it. The, the thing that I'd say about that is, and, and, and having a bit of, of a slightly more unique perspective of what uh, like broadcasting um, football matches are like and, and the second leg against Sheffield United and, and, and sitting there and watching it. And... So you sat there fanning around doing this and um, you listen to everyone talking in the trucks, wherever they are. And, the, and to a person in that, they're all gobsmacked watching that because you'll know, Fletcher, you get all these, we've got some wonderful cameramen, slightly better than BT's cameramen, but, um, but they all, and, and they're all, they're all they're, they're at the very top of the game, aren't they? And the shots that are sent through and that they're looking through, it's, it's a bit of a boring technical kind of TV chat, but... Everyone's in the truck going, my God, this looks amazing. It's like watching Argentina in the 70s. You know, the ticker tape, everyone's got a massive flag, all the banners, and it makes the spectacle. And it's a different chat about football on TV. I understand that. But being in the ground and listening to people reacting to that, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Because it's a proper spectacle, isn't it? You know that we do the Premier League, not the Championship. Yeah. Don't you? yeah, you know yeah. That. I'm not subscribed yet. I'm not allowed. <laughs> same, Prot, same question. As a footballer, why aren't Forrest getting points away? Because it's... Bloody hard to get a points in the Premier League, isn't it? Come on! No, I mean, it's really hard. It's, it's hard to win away in the Premier That's League. That's what I mean. I mean, how hard is it oh, to get any hard. points on the road in very the Premier hard. League? And it, you, you, you maximise your home advantage in every single sense of that description. Because it's a really hard league. <laughs> do they do anything different? One of the questions is... Uh, attack the five teams in the Premier League that win away consistently, you'd say Liverpool and Man City, Arsenal, Tottenham, now, maybe Man United... After that, nobody else. It's a, it's it's you know this is the thing. You know what you know what, the difference between the championship and the Premier League is like so vast. It's 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 off the scale. To win away from home in the Premier League is so difficult. If if that's why you say look, got to win ten home games or whatever it is because you know any point away from home is ridiculously hard to get. You know the night at Brighton. You look at that, how hard was that point to get? How many times did we have to ride a look that night? And that's Brighton. They're okay, middle of the road. It, it's so difficult to get anything away from home. And anything you do get is like such a bonus. It's off the scale. Even the, even the best teams in the league find it hard to win away. Liverpool aren't a guarantee this season to go and win away in the league. And there aren't many better than them. So... It's just, it's just such a difficult league. I mean, God, any other league in Europe, you'd say, yeah, go and win away. 
Premier League, it's like the best players in the world, the best teams in Europe. It's so difficult. Uh, well, leading off that next question, it can be uh, attack or defence, which is going to keep us up, Mikey? Uh, attack. I was speaking to uh, uh, a Tottenham fan who's a Tottenham season ticket holder, and I said, do you think Forrest is going to go down? And he said, no. I was like, really? I said, why? And he said, because you score goals. He says, if you look at the teams that have gone down in the last 10, 15 years, they've all struggled to score goals. Now, I know we've, we've struggled to keep them out, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is a slight problem, but we don't really struggle to score. I don't about you guys, but I always fancy us to score a goal. And it's the hardest thing in the world to score a goal, certainly in this league. So I genuinely think that we don't necessarily have a problem going forward. I think, I think Darren and David were talking earlier on about the number nine. And I think we've all got opinions on, on you know, do we, do we buy somebody to play in that number nine? Is Gibbs White playing there because he doesn't necessarily trust who is, the, you know, the options he's got at the moment? But even with that said, I still think we're going to score. Chelsea at home on New Year's Day, I reckon we'll score. You got, I've got a load of, you guys reckon we'll score that game, right? So I don't necessarily think there's an issue with scoring goals. I think we just need to maybe keep what we're doing, keep tightening up. We can't keep winning 1 0 every week, by the way. You know, that's two or three home games in 1 0. That is not sustainable. So we do need to find a way to score more goals. But for me, the answer to your question, Matt, is we're okay. We just need to score more goals. I don't necessarily think that's an issue. So it's dead easy goals. answer. But I'm all about the easy answer. That's answers. what got you on this panel. That there you answer. go. I, I, I would go with you, Mikey, but I think the mistakes in the early weeks of the season, the individual errors that led to goals, are a problem were a problem and they're problems that you can't overcome and I think now they've, they've stopped doing that when they restart against Man United at Old Trafford those mistakes can't come in because you kind of looked at the goals that were being conceded and every goal that Forrest conceded you could trace it back you didn't see many goals and you went nothing you could do about that a lot of the goals were preventable and this is the kind of league where if you're happy to give a goal away you're always going to find it difficult. So difficult to score two in the Premier League. So, all right, score one. You just made the point there, we can't keep winning games 1-0 exactly. And we weren't. The issue is, if you make individual mistakes, which they were doing, and a lot of people were doing it, it wasn't one individual, two individual. it was the team. You could, you could trace it back to the mistakes. And I think, yeah, they're going to score goals. I get that. But I think they've got to make sure they keep those individual errors out of the game if they're going to be successful. Uh, just conscious of time before we have to finish. Got a couple of questions. That you're actually conscious of pneumonia. That's what you're conscious of for everybody You're, you're the one who's moaning about your hands all the way through. So I'm the one wearing gloves. Well, I'm freezing. A um, couple of quick fire ones to finish. I'll start with Greg for this because you've actually got money on one of these. Do you think a Forest player will play for England in the next few seasons? Yes. Who? Obviously, because if we stay up, we're going to invest even further and we'll invest in English talent, surely. Um, yeah, I, after the Liverpool loss last season uh, in the Cup, I had a bet that Joe Worrell would uh, play for England within five years. And then all my friends started saying, well, I'll take that with you. So I'm going to owe a lot of money if he doesn't, so better. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because we, we're going to improve. We're going to win games and we're going to start getting up that table. And then with that, we'll come, we'll come better players. So a Forest player will play for England. Because if he doesn't, we've gone down. Oh, oh dear. Uh, so, Greg says, Joe, Prutz, anyone you would pick out? Using Greg's logic, yeah. He flawed as it is. <laughs> yeah, and you've given me your gloves. So, um, <laughs> whatever you just said. Uh, sorry, Lent, yeah. Christ, oh, you've never seen these again. <laughs> um, of the current crop or just in the future? Uh, well, yeah, let's I think say, it's let's an say, easy yes, Prutz. It's an easy yes. Let's say players they who are here now. I no wonder Henderson. they say what they, they say. They <laughs> signed, Jesus Christ. It's an easy yes. So they signed Dean Henderson yeah. permanently in the summer and he plays for England next season. Boom, there you go. There you go. What about I anyone else? I defer to my uh, What about Morgan Gibbs-White then? Fletch, Morgan Gibbs-White? Yeah, but, but you know, we've only got to need one, don't we? He makes his money if we get one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm picking them all. It's only just Warrell. a Warrell. Oh, he's, he's, Jesus Christ. There you go, okay. Yeah, Mor yeah, Morgan can, yeah. Absolutely he can, yeah. Could Ryan Yates play for England, Mikey? Uh, probably not. <laughs> I, know, I know everybody's a big fan. Um, I, I think he's... Uh, well, what's really weird about him is, is he just keeps improving. So in League One, what was he? Scunthorpe for, for a year. Went to County, came back, improved. Championship, everybody wrote him off, improved. Got us up. Everyone's writing him off now. He's improving. So who knows? But... 
you know, what is he, 24, 24, 25? You're only going to get better, aren't you? I, I would say it's unlikely, but I wouldn't say it's, un- it's impossible. Last question before we have to go. Um, it's a quick fire one. Forest League position at the end of the season. Start with Fletch. So I think it was Sport Bible put um, a three-word response they wanted to what your team needed to do when the season started. So I put 17th is enough. I don't care where they finish. Provided it's 17 and higher, I couldn't give a monkeys because they deserve to stay in the Premier League. I want them to stay in the Premier League. I'm desperate for them to stay in the Premier League. With regards to where they finish, not bothered. But what I would say is I don't think they're going to get relegated. So wherever that is after that, fantastic. Knock yourself out. Get your prize money. I'm not bothered. Go and have a great summer. Have a great holiday. Sign a few players. We'll all come back next season and enjoy it. Anything higher than 17th, I am all in. Prats, what are you saying? Put a, put a number to it. Uh, put a number to it. Uh, 17th. Still say ninth, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> Greg, what about the Europa League next year? <laughs> Can you still do that with the FA Cup? Oh, I don't know. Um, what I'll say is, I think we either... Well, we're not going to fail, but it either goes wrong or we push on dramatically. Steve Cooper goes on runs with this team. (laughs) He did it last season, so I truly, truly believe, and I know it's recorded, but I do genuinely believe this, that we will push on now. Whether it gets to top off, maybe not. (laughs) But I don't think I'll be embarrassed by my predictions at the end of the season. I don't think I'll be slated for it. I think they'll say, oh, it was closer than we thought. I remember Mikey, you, myself, and Temps all said 15th. So still 15th or better or worse? Mate, I think you will. <laughs> to be honest. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I'll downgrade it a little bit because of our start. But I do think, with, with you guys, I think we'll stay up. I think we'll have enough. I think we'll come back. This team, 23 new players, are only going to get better. We've seen it the last couple of games. So for me, I'll probably go 16th, maybe. And I'll take that every day of the week, as, as will everybody else. Excellent. Right. We shall leave that there, but we're going to do the raffle now. But if you'd please be kind of give the panel a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much for everyone who's come along. I hope you had a good night. I, I know I shivered like a bastard, but I have had a good night. And I hope everyone else did too. So thank you very much. Give yourselves another round of applause. Thanks, everybody. Absolutely. But also as well, come on, a big round of big applause, round of applause for, for Matt for and Gary Rett. Thank you. We're going to do another one of these uh, in the summer here. All been well. It'll be great to see you again. In the meantime, have a great Christmas and we shall see you all soon. Thank you for listening to Garibaldi Red, a Nottingham Forest podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode. Thanks for listening.